Hello, what is up all of you beautiful subscribers? Today we are talking about 10 reasons why most people won't be successful. And yes, we, uh, we are missing our whiteboard. We normally have a whiteboard for these videos, but someone, I was away for three days and someone broke the whiteboard stand. I mean, come on, it was, it was working for a year. Anyways, 10 reasons why people will not, not succeed. So anyways, we are gonna start off with number one. So the number one thing that I see a lot of the times is, is just laziness. Just people are just too lazy. People are naturally just lazy these days. Actually, I was reading a, a study. People think that, you know, 5,000 years ago, people were working a lot harder because you needed to go and get food. You needed to go grow your food. You needed to stay alert from predators and all that stuff. But people would actually only work, you know, a couple hours a day. Most of their day was just sitting around and hanging out with family and friends in their community. I didn't know this. And so people are supposed to actually only work a few hours a day and just lay down for the rest of the day actually, which is kind of funny. However, if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur in, these, in, in the current age, you need to be working 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day. You're working eight hours a day? Well, guess, actually, actually there was this, uh, this article from Gary Vaynerchuk actually. There was an article from Gary Vaynerchuk on uh, CNBC, Market Watch, one of those, one of those um, websites. And he essentially said, you know why people are not becoming successful? It's because house of cards. And then he's like, let me explain, let me explain here. Let me explain. He's like, sure, you work eight hours a day, plus your commute's like maybe one or two hours, maybe three hours, maybe from your work day, plus maybe you commute even four hours a day. You are 12 hours a day, you are just done. You are completely done. Well, that leaves four hours every single day where you can do other stuff. And you know what's killing it? House of cards. You should be using that four hours to build a side business, have a side hustle, sell some stuff, not watching Netflix, not watching TV, not watching whatever it may be. You shouldn't be lazy. You shouldn't just go home and just sit down. Those other four hours, I mean, you know what? I'll tell you guys my story, then we'll move on to the next one here. My story is that when I started building my side businesses, including, you know what, even YouTube, I count that as a side business, right? On YouTube, I was building that in March of last year, 2016, right? This was the YouTube channel. You know, I'd be working. I'd be working. I'd be commuting to, I'd be commuting on average three to four hours a day. So two hours each way usually. One hour and a half, two hours each way. Plus I'd be working eight hours a day. And then I'd get home and guess what I would do? I'd also have to work out in the gym in the morning too. So there's another hour and a half out of my, out of my day. And so I'd have a few hours and every single day I'd go home. I'd upload YouTube videos. I'd also start marketing and learning real estate and doing my license and all that stuff as well. And so that's what you guys gotta do too. You cannot just come home from work or school and just kick your feet up. I did that for years. I didn't amount to much at the time. All right, it wasn't until I started working those extra few hours every single day, even if it's an extra one hour a day when you get home, that helps. And so just remember the saying of Gary Vaynerchuk, house of cards is killing your ability to be successful. So we're gonna move on to number two. Number two is entitlement, okay? So this is a big, big problem I see from, you know, typically it's the same kind of person where they just complain about the way the system is. And this is what every 20 year old does. This is what your parents did too. Every 20 year old complains about the current system is just unfair towards young people. It kind of is. I mean, I agree. The current system kind of sucks for young people. I agree with that. It's just, there's also a sense of entitlement that you can just do nothing all day and still be fine and still be, I should have a, a big million dollar house or $500,000 house. Even though you're either working 20 hours a week or you're, maybe you're working 40 hours a week, but it's not in a, it's in a job that's gonna be replaced by a robot. Like, is that a job that should be paid highly? I mean, I don't really know. I, I don't know, okay? But it's just, there's the sense of entitlement that everything should come to you. That you, because you are a person and you are nice and all this stuff, that the world should give you all the money and all, all the good things and all the financial success and all the you know, business success. It doesn't work like that. The world doesn't owe you anything. That's the attitude that you guys need. Don't have a sense of entitlement for anything. All right, we're gonna move on here. Excuse me, number three. Number three is the, fe oh, this is a big one. The fear of change, you know, rejection, failure, whatever it may be. You have fear, just in general. And so we're gonna talk about like change, just the fear to change. People don't wanna change. People are comfortable with who they are. <laughs> I mean, I thought I, was, I thought I was a good business person when I was like 18. And boy, was I wrong. I was an okay business person. I was better than most people my age, but I was not a good business person. People don't wanna change. You know, you might even be comfortable 
in your own work life. Maybe you're making $80,000 a year. You have a family. Maybe your husband or wife works and gets an extra 30 grand a year. So you guys are doing very well. But again, $110,000, maybe you're just, you're comfortable and that's it. You're comfortable and stable. If you're okay with that, fine. If you're okay with that, then that's fine. But guess what? You're not going to be that uber successful millionaire in the super, maybe, maybe you can reach millionaire if you invest properly, but maybe not like the multimillionaire dream life that you always wanted. Okay. People don't fear change. And maybe it's a, maybe you're comfortable in living with 30 or $40,000 a year. Cause that's just the way it is. That's just the way what you're comfortable. You need to go outside your comfort zone. Maybe you're making 40 grand a year. You're paying all your bills and you're saving a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a year. Are you comfortable with that? You shouldn't be. You, you know what? <laughs> the best thing is to make yourself poor. I always give this tip to all you guys out there. All everyone watching is that my motivator, my biggest motivator for wanting to make money every single day. Man, I really like this camera angle. I like it a lot better. Uh, <laughs> why I, I, I like to work every single day is because, well, I, like, I make myself poor because that's my motivation. Whenever I have more than a few thousand dollars in my checking account, more than like 2,000 bucks, I'm like, oh, why am I getting called from Newfoundland? Jesus Christ. Anyone know this number? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, where was I? I was, oh yeah, I don't like to make myself comfortable. So whenever I have more than a couple thousand bucks in my checking account, I invest that either back into the business advertising. Now it's into the, my, my website e-commerce venture, or I've invested in stocks. I always try to invest, you know, now a thousand, two thousand, three thousand bucks a month in stocks. And then I'll, I'll invest more than that in, in business as well. And that's just kind of, I make myself poor because if you only have a thousand dollars in your checking account, or maybe that number for you is a hundred dollars or $200, $500, whatever the number is where you start to get worried, maybe it's $10. That is kind of the state, which I'm not saying make, you know, go out and spend it all. I'm saying, put it in a, a place where you can't access it as easily. Put it in a 401k, put it in an RRSP, put it in a stock portfolio, put it in an investment portfolio of some sort. Put it in something where you have to make more money or else you're not going to be able to pay rent. I mean, that, that's seriously what I do. That's seriously what I do. That is one of the biggest reasons for my success is making myself poor. <laughs> like actually. Now, by making myself poor, I'm actually making myself wealthier. Do you actually see this? Is, this is the Grant Cardone saying, I guess. I don't know if it is, but he, he would say something like this. By making myself poor, I'm making myself rich. <laughs> Hopefully you guys like that impression. Maybe I should make a great Cardone parody. Oh, I had that idea. Maybe I should do that. Anyways, uh, making yourself poor. It's a big motivation. So again, change. Don't fear failure. Don't fear being poor. Don't fear any of that stuff. Okay. You should find your own driver, change your life, change your life in some sort of way, change your habits, change your daily habits, whatever it may be. Just change something. Don't fear anything. Find your motivators and go for it. So anyways, we're going to move on here to number four here, which is negativity. Oh God, this is the killer for successful people at their job that don't want to build a business or want to build a business, but they don't know how they don't want to because they fear they it's again, it's back to fear. It's like, Oh, I, I shouldn't invest in this. I shouldn't, I shouldn't start this business cause I'm just going to fail. I have to be amazing at everything before I start this business. I have to, I mean me, I'm starting a business. I'm going into a field against Amazon and eBay. <laughs> like, I should be negative right now, but I'm not. I'm confident. That's what you guys got to have. Whenever you guys got to start something, go into a new field or change. Whenever you do change, be confident, be confident, be like a badass. Be like, yeah, this is going to succeed. Now don't be delirious. Don't be good. Don't go in putting all your eggs in one basket and being like, oh, this new great, um, doll making business is going to succeed. <laughs> like probably not, um, prepare for failure, but don't fear it. Oh, that's a good saying. Prepare for failure, but don't fear it. I like it. Someone tweet that at me. <laughs> so that's another good one. So negativity is a bad one. Number five is lack of goals and ambition. This is just, do you even want it? Like that's, that's the thing. This is what it all comes down to. Like, do you, do you actually want it? Cause a lot of people, what I realize is that talking to my friends and stuff, like 80, 90% of people, they just don't want it be successful. They just don't care. They just like stability. They like stability. And after five or six o'clock going out and having a drink with their buddies, that's seriously, that's what they care about. Uh, why am I getting, I get, why am I just popular? This is the first time I've gotten 
two calls in the same video right now. This is the weirdest thing ever. Um, so I'm going to have to call that person back though. That's, that's actually my dad. <laughs> so uh, where was I? Lack of goals and ambition. So this is a big, big one. Um, again, yeah, just people don't want it. 80% of people don't want it. People want to go and drink with friends. They want to go and hang out with their family. If you want that life, cool. I don't want that life. I want the life where I can go and take my family on a private fucking jet to the Caribbean or something like that, right? Have that freedom, that actual freedom. Because those people who like spending the time, the extra few hours with their family, that extra few hours with their buddies every night, and they're 25 years old, if they were to lose their job, maybe they have one or two months and then they're screwed. They need to either get unemployment or you know, welfare or find a new job. They don't have absolute freedom. I have freedom. I don't have absolute freedom right now, but I could, well, I'm not going to quit what I'm doing right now, but I can't get fired. I can't fire myself. And even if my businesses were all the tank at the same time, I'd be good for a year. I'd be, I have a pretty big runway right now. <laughs> so um, I, could probably la- I could probably stretch that out a lot longer though, actually, if I think about it, probably maybe two years. But anyways, uh, lack of goals, lack of ambition, you don't want to do it. You just simply do not want to build a business, build, be successful. In your, you're, you're comfortable being the middleman in your company. That could be it for you. Maybe you're just comfortable with that and you don't want it. And that's one of the reasons why you might not be successful when you're older. Okay? We're going to move on to number six, actually. <laughs> Five, six. We're going to move on to number six here, which is just simply blaming others and excuses and being like, oh, this didn't work out because this. Oh, I, I, I can't do this because of this reason. You know, I can't go, to, you know, one of my favorite, one, favorite ones is, you know, I don't want to work out because I'm out of shape. Like, I don't want to work out because I get too tired. I'm too tired. Well, one of the reasons why you're too tired is because you don't work out. Like, because <laughs> you don't eat right. Uh, stuff like that, or, you know, just building up too many excuses just for everything. Like, there was a, uh, you know, when people are, I'll give you the example that people don't like it when I talk about it, but I don't really care. Um, so when people are really overweight, when you're 300 pounds, there are so few cases, well, I'm, we're talking maybe one in 100,000 or one in a million where that is, it's not that person's fault. If you're 300 pounds, odds are it's because of you're eating 4,000 calories a day, 5,000 calories a day, and you're not exercising. Um, I mean, cause here's the deal is that you should adapt to your body. Even if your metabolism sucks and you should only be eating 800 calories a day, eat 800 calories a day. Well, you know, I don't get enough nutrients. Well, take a multivitamin, right? That's the body you're given. Guess what? Michael Phelps can eat 6,000 calories a day and a bunch of Big Macs and he's a six pack. Greatest swimmer of all time, right? So, I mean, it's just, you, it's, certain situations suck. You can be born into certain situations and suck, whether it's genetically or even ec- economically, socially, whatever. I, I get it. I was born into a very good one. I mean, actually, we, I was born into a good one, and then my family kind of economically went downhill very drastically, like off a cliff within one year uh, when I was like 12, I guess, 12 or 13 years old. But um, I was born into a good situation. I know plenty of people that are successful. One of my mentors, he was born into a lower middle class family. He's built seven companies. He could sell them all and live as a multimillionaire, maybe close to a multimillionaire, the rest of his life if he wanted to. And just people, you gotta make the, you gotta make do with what you got. All right, that at the end of the day, you got. Is that a quote from someone? I don't know, but you have to make do with what you got, and you you only have one life. This is your opportunity. Whatever you're born with, just stop complaining and make the most out of it. I was born into a good situation, I then went to, into a bad situation. There was points where I didn't have more than a few hundred dollars in my checking account. There was a point where that happened. Instead of complaining, be like, oh, uh, people should be giving me job, uh, giving me a job or giving me money or, you know, there's a point where I was getting really sick. And you know what I did when I went through organ failure? I started learning about business. That's what I did. I didn't sit around, you know, when I had a couple hundred bucks in my checking account and I was in a hospital room, I'd pull up my phone, I was like, oh, Real estate. <laughs> oh, let's, uh, let's read up on what, uh, what the cap rate is. What a cap rate is. I'd actually do that. That was funny. Uh, only some hospitals had Wi-Fi, though, which sucked. Um, anyways, we're going to move on here because that was a really long tangent. We're going to talk about wasting time. <laughs> That's a good tangent. Wasting time. So this is something that I kind of have this, this thought process where Entrepreneurs and successful people never have enough hours in the day. And I didn't understand that until the last year and a half. Where literally my problem 
is I work 18 hours a day and there's just, I'm not tired and there's not enough hours for me to do what I want to do in the day. I want to get more done. And I always want to get more done. And that is my problem. That is, that's a problem for all entrepreneurs, for all successful people. You want to get more done in the time you have. And meanwhile, I talk to people, they just like nine hours, eight hours a day, they go to work. And then there's just like the day's too long. <laughs> I mean, man. Man, that is a different mindset. You cannot have that mindset. Whereas, if your day's too long, make your day longer. Or make your, make your day long. If your day is too long, um, make your day better. Okay? Not make your day longer. What I say. <laughs> um, so just after work, go and do something that you're motivated to do. Be looking for. Be you no. Know, look. Make your work life so that you look forward to that. You wish that you could work more. Whatever it is, if you are unhappy with your job as a, <laughs> I'm, I gotta stop using the graphic designer example. You, get, you know what, leave a comment. What should be my next example? What should be the next job example that I rip on? Graphic designer designer's number one. That I don't rip on it, but I use that as an example. I don't know. If your job is a, um, I don't know, a, even a salesman. If you're a salesman at a company and you hate it, go do something else. Go do something else that you really like, that you can be successful at, that you can be the number one at. Guess what? The number one graphic designer in the world gets paid more than the shitty salesman. I guess you've never heard me say that before. That happens. <laughs> so be good and, and look forward to what you want to do every day. Make your day more exciting. Uh, make it so that you never have enough hours in the day to do what you want to do. So we're going to move on here to number eight. Number eight is thinking too small. And this is uh, something I talk about a lot actually. Just with average people, average people, I mean, I always tell this story about how people get intimidated about my ambitions. I'm building a, a literally startup that people are going to be laughing at right now. People are going to be laughing at, but I have the ambition to make it into a multi-million dollar e-commerce website. I mean, I want to become a billionaire by the time I am dead, essentially. All right, I want to have, I want to make a hundred million dollars, have a nice net worth, donate a lot to charity, tip waitresses a thousand dollars at a time, things like that. All right, I want to do all of that stuff. I have those giant ambitions, and then I go and talk to my friends. I go and talk to my girlfriend when I started dating her. She was like, "Wait, I told actually, I don't know. If I've told this specific story." Um, and so I, t I told, I don't know if I told this, but when we started dating, I was talking about how I wanted to build up a uh, like a hundred million dollar real estate portfolio. And my girlfriend was like, she th obviously thought I was joking. She's like, okay there. And it took her, I seriously, it took her a minute of me backing up with all of my statistics and theory and my actual ambition before she's like, oh, you're serious. Oh, you're, and then she didn't believe me. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna build some businesses over the next few years. And if we're still together, you're gonna see. You're going to see it all happen. You're going to see how all of my plans are going to start to come together. And then it took a few months. She's like, oh, wait, Jack is actually going to be successful. Oh, crap, his, his ideas might come true. To the point where actually having this conversation like two months ago, we were talking about how I wanted to build the first space, Canadian space company, private Canadian space company. And she said this. Oh, um, like, go for it. Like, cool. Nate, can I name it? <laughs> like, she, she wasn't even joking about it. I know it sounds like she was joking, but you guys got to have that, uh, those, that big thinking. You guys can't be thinking small. Think big. You want to build up a million dollar stock portfolio? Build up a five million dollar one. Think you should build a five, five million dollar one. Reach for the stars so if you fall, you land on the cloud. Kanye West. Boom. <laughs> I just quoted Kanye in my video. That's a first. What's that song from? Touch the sky. Do 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 do. Good. Touch the sky. I don't know. I don't know. That was that was a good song. Yeah. Reach for the stars. So if you fall, you land on a cloud. How about that? We're gonna move on here to the next one, which is number nine. So number nine is kind of similar to lack of confidence and negativity. It's just not having a confidence in yourself. I mean, I won't cover that too much. Uh, this is already a long video, but not having enough confidence is something that can kill you. If you want to start a business, if you want to be successful, you eventually over time, sure. When you start something, you may not be that confident, but you should have some sort of confidence. Then as you keep going, you'll build up more confidence. Then as you do more things, as you try more things that you were fearful of, like as you try to build more businesses, you'll become more confident. Trust me. When I started my first one, I had zero confidence. First one, and it failed. Good reasoning. Then I kept going. I kept building, the, I guess I'm now on number 21, my 21st business. So 20 more later, right? I'm 
confident as hell that I'm going to jump into a space with a bunch of e-commerce giants that I'm going to be successful. I mean, you, you guys got to be confident. You guys got to believe in yourself. You guys got to keep trying stuff until you succeed. All right, so we're going to move on to the last one here, which is simply just not investing in yourself. This is something that prevents people from being successful. You just, seriously, you don't invest in yourself. You um, don't try to keep improving yourself. You don't try to keep educating yourself. Don't try to keep learning. I mean, I just made a video about Mark Cuban. He said that learning is a lifelong endeavor. And I've, that's 100% true. One of the reasons why I'm ahead is because I keep learning. If you guys are watching this video and are at the end here, guess what? You guys are already ahead. You guys are already ahead than most people your age. If you guys are listening to this in podcast form, thank you all for downloading it, uh, <laughs> then you guys are already ahead. So investing in yourself, whatever that is, if it's sales training, if it's you want to be the, the best, I guess I, my example is salesman now. Uh, you want to be the best salesman? Yeah, invest in sales training. You want to be the best illustrator? Invest in illustrating, whatever. You want to be the best investor? Invest in investment books. You want to guys learn how to build a business? Buy a, whatever, learn how to build a business. Go on YouTube, watch these videos. Learn how to build a business. You guys are going to see me document my process of building the, an e-commerce site. We'll see if it works out. I might fail. It might not. We'll see. So, you know what? Um, I think that's going to wrap this video up. That kind of covered everything. My finger's really bleeding right now. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Remember to check out my Wealth Accelerator. Uh, link is in the description below. It teaches you how to build a business if you are interested. Uh, stock market program. If you're interested in that, check that out too. Um, and you know what? I think I just want to mention, uh, I'm not going to mention the website, my, my website name yet, but for my e-commerce website, just keep, stay tuned over the next month or two. I will probably be releasing the name in the next few weeks as soon as the website gets up, maybe about a month or two from now. So uh, if you're interested in just keeping track of that, just keep watching these videos. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and hit that like button too. So thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I don't know why I did that.